this video, we're going to discuss the different status indicators on the FPO150, how to enable monitoring, and how to wire the various inputs. I just want to make note, in the larger QX door kits, there might not be a B100 present, but two separate power supplies. In this example, there might be one enabled for 24 volt, and the other will be set for 12 volt. There is a jumper in the right-hand side of the board that will alternate between the two voltages, disconnect power first, and change the jumper to the desired settings. Getting into the module, first we're gonna start off with the flex IO input. This connector supplies the FAI status between the FPO and the accessory boards in the door kit. These cables will be supplied and installed already with each accessory board. For installing batteries, use these connectors here. You're gonna route these to the bottom of the enclosure and install your batteries. If it's important for your site, remember that UL294 compliance requires that the batteries must be sized for a minimum of four hours of standby at full load. Speaking about the AC input here, we have white for neutral, green for earth ground, and black for hot. With a successful connection, the green LED labeled AC on in the bottom left corner will come on and remain solid green. For whatever reason, the voltage is out of range. You might see an AC fault LED, which we'll mention in a second. Always remember to please meter check your AC power to diagnose further. The LED indicator bank that is located in the bottom left corner, starting at the top, we have FAI. This will flash red when a fire alarm input is received on the fire alarm input terminal. Below that, we have ground fault. This will flash yellow when an impedance is detected between the earth ground and any voltage output or DC common. A ground fault will also light the system fault LED we, below that, we have AC fault. This will flash yellow when the AC input voltage is low or missing. Below that, we have the system fault. This will flash yellow when a system trouble is detected by the FPO. This status will group several conditions together, such as missing battery, if battery detection jumper is on, earth fault ground, if earth fault ground jumper is on, battery voltage out of range, DC output voltage out of range, a ruptured fuse, accessory board fault, or an internal fault. Moving on to the physical jumpers, we have bat debt on the bottom right of the board. We also have earth ground debt on the left-hand side of the board. Earth ground fault detection detects continuity between earth ground and any voltage output or DC common on the system. Position one enables EG fault detection Position two disables EG fault detection. Position two is the factory default position. Only one component of an entire door kit should be enabled to avoid detection conflicts. Moving on to the output connections. So starting off with this black terminal block here, these terminals will provide system fault and AC fault contact outputs. So conditions reported on the AC fault are low AC, missing AC, internal fault. Conditions reported on the system fault terminal block are missing battery if bat debt jumper is on, earth ground fault if the earth debt jumper, earth debt jumper is on, battery voltage out of range, DC output voltage out of range, ruptured fuse, accessory board fault, and internal fault. Moving on to some wiring examples. Here on this terminal block, we're gonna wire both the system fault and AC fault to our LP1502 through a single input. We achieve this by taking our black conductor and wiring it to the system fault common. We're gonna take our white conductor and we're gonna wire it to the AC fault normally open. This jumper in the middle is gonna go from our system fault normally open to common. This connector will then connect to our LP1502 on terminal block one on the fault and ground terminals. Moving on to our fire alarm input terminal block, I'm gonna show you a very common activation um, wiring configuration. So we're gonna use a normally open contact. In this case, uh, I'm gonna have one conductor connected to my voltage minus input. I'm then gonna have one conductor connected to my I minus input, and then I'm gonna run a jumper between I plus and V plus. 
That concludes the FPO 150. We're going to move on to the C8.